So we're going to hold on to that thought, but let's get to it because there's some serious news going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> some hardcore stuff. I don't know if you guys saw this. We mentioned it in the beginning of the show. Uh, there was a little tweet by one of the, a friend of the show, uh, Jimmy James Dean Dore, uh, when he went out there. Oh, you mean the racist? You mean racist Jimmy that, Dore? Yeah, who that hates right black progressive Nazi son that of a guy? bitch. Yeah, Jimmy. Um, and it's so funny because I, I, I shared that tweet too as well. Nina Turner made a tweet saying, my prediction of the fallout of the FBI yes. rating Mar-a-Lago is that we're probably going to see a bunch of MAGA Republicans call to abolish the FBI. So I retweeted and said, so you endorse the FBI? And don't get me wrong. I saw the hypocrisy on both sides. Like here goes the right now, the ones that every single aspect of law enforcement, they supported that when we saw them gassed in January 6th, which this whole shenanigans starting about, they were like, come on, blue, we fought for you. They couldn't believe it. But then Jimmy, he tweets when lefties cheer on the FBI, you know, they're <laughs> serious about being a Democrat. So with us today to explain that tweet, uh, Antifa's finest himself, I guess. I don't know what they're calling him nowadays. Jimmy Dore is with us. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm talking to you from Louisville, Kentucky. Oh. I'm bringing the politics of the Jimmy Dore show to Louisville, Kentucky at the Louisville Comedy Club tonight. I was in Indianapolis last night. Man, that was a blast. Nice. You're doing and, that toward awesome. the Midwest. Yeah, and That's tomorrow awesome. I'll be in Cincinnati. But what happened today with Nina Turner, I mean, I'm in her part of the country is what I'm saying. I'm in the middle of the country. Yeah. And, uh, it was very disappointing to see her. You you can disagree with my criticism, but you, you got to call someone a racist because you did because they criticized you. And that just shows you that I hit a nerve. She knows she's a uh, she knows she's a Democrat. And this is this is all every first of all, that tweet of hers calling out their right wing's hypocrisy about the FBI. You call out their, their, their hypocrisy when they're in the wrong. You don't call out their hypocrisy when they're in the right. You welcome them over to the correct side. If they now start to come on board for Medicare for all, are you gonna then flip them off and call them assholes because they used to say they were against it? That's not how this is supposed to work. So they have the right idea now because it happened to them. Like all we, we always say, a Republican or conservatives can't understand a problem until it affects them personally. But we forget that conservatives are the Democrats and the Republicans. So now that it's happened to the Republicans, or the or the MAGA, the Trump supporters. Now they'll see. Now they get it. They're like, oh, the the FBI is corrupt. So you should welcome them. You shouldn't then keep flipping them off and shitting on them. And that's all the Democrats have. And that's what Nina Turner is. She's a Democrat. That's where her future is. That's what this is about. Her career in the Democratic Party. This is about her career. This isn't about any principle because if it was about a principle, she would be welcoming those people who are criticizing the FBI instead of flipping them off and then hide doing the cheapest bullshit, hiding behind identity politics. Oh my God, calling out and calling some, hey, you want to disagree with me about the FBI? Let's disagree about it. But she can't do it because she knows she's in the wrong. And so she does that thing. She's the pits, man. How does Put her tweet up there. Show her tweet what she said. She says, when Jimmy Dore knocked a black progressive woman for pointing out conservative hypocrisy when it comes to the FBI, you know he's serious about being anti-black and protecting -black. conservatives. Jimmy, go change your uh, shirt and take your sunglasses <laughs> off. They're black. Get out of them off. I don't want to hear about it. Do, do, you, do you see why the hashtag Me Too, when, when a woman makes a false allegation, it does it hurt the man. It hurts all women. And so when she makes a bullshit yeah. allegation like this, it's pathetic. And that because there actually is racism in the world. And when you call everything racism, it make, do you see why it's easy? for the people to dismiss when you call something racism, because you call everything racist. So according to her, any criticism of a black woman is racist. And do you see how that just turned, that's just the wrong message. Do you see how that doesn't help your side? It actually hurts your side, but she doesn't care about her side. She cares about her career. And so she doesn't care that this actually hurts pe uh, people when they actually are victims of racism, because when you throw it around so casually like this and such, it's like when they call Bernie Sanders a, a, a sexist, right? When this is when uh, Elizabeth Warren said Bernie Sanders was a sexist, it doesn't land. 
And it all it does is it hurts you when you call Donald Trump a sexist or when you call anybody who actually is a sexist. They go, well, if Bernie Sanders is a sexist and Donald Trump is a sexist, I guess being a sexist isn't that bad of a thing then. Or this is just something you call everybody that you don't like. And that's exactly what this is. This is Nina Turner being called out correctly and her flex isn't to debate honestly, but to do some bullshit underhanded cheap shit like this. And she's revealing herself. I'm a fucking pothead YouTube comedian. I'm not reveal revealing who I am. She's revealing who she is and everybody fucking sees it now. Anybody who's of sober mind can look at our exchange on Twitter and there's gonna come away with a lower opinion of Nina Turner. She's only playing to Democrats now. That's cause she's a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And all I did was call her a Democrat and she immediately called me a racist for calling her a Democrat. Mm -hmm. That is, what is that? That tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's so Jimmy, I, I, I just, I just wanted to ask you, what, what, what do you think about this whole situation? Because we were going to talk about it, right? Isn't it, isn't it the most politically manipulated hit job? You don't have to love Donald Trump, and I hate that we even have to say that. I hate that we even have to say the fact that it is not about Trump. It, it is about the fact that. Joe Biden's son and and all he did and all the money that Hillary and Bill Clinton ran away with, all of that is completely irrelevant. But now we're all talking about Donald Trump and what he could have possibly got away with. And it's so poignant right now because coincidentally, the Democrats approval rating is in the can. It's trash. Joe Biden's approval rating is trash. Inflation is at an all time high. This is, I think, one of the most politically manipulated things. And I think it's backfiring on the entire Democratic Party. But I also think it's that's part of it is the focus on, on the Trump versus the Democrats, that whole back and forth. It just keeps happening over and over again. Meanwhile, the people are suffering. We're still giving billions to the Azov Battalion and so on and so forth. Um of course, this is a political hit job and people see it for what it is. Everyone knows Hillary Clinton wiped 33, deleted 33,000 emails after she was subpoenaed and nothing happened to her. So that, so the fact that, and this, uh, this, so this is, we're told this happened at a local level, a local FBI guy got a local judge to do this and this didn't go, come from up top. I mean, again, it's just, we, we're living in a banana republic. We say Russia and Ukraine are corrupt, which they are, but there's nobody more corrupt than the United States government. The United States government is 100% owned and purchased by the corporations and the more, and the bloodthirsty military industrial complex. And that's what this is. This isn't about law. This is about an outsider. They can't have Trump be the ugly face of imperialism, not because Trump is going to legislate any differently than they, than they do. Trump's biggest accomplishment was a tax cut for millionaires and billionaires. He didn't do anything. He didn't give us health care. He didn't give us living wage. He didn't give us education. He didn't do anything like he didn't end the wars and bring them. He didn't do anything like he said he was going to do, except he gave everybody a tax cut who make, who makes millions and billions of dollars. So it was. So why do they hate Trump? It's because Trump puts an ugly face. And I said this in 2016, and it's true. Trump puts an ugly face on the uh, on imperialism, and he puts an ugly face on the establishment. And so they can't have that. You know, uh, Donald Trump did nothing different than Joe Biden. Barack Obama deported more Hispanics than Donald Trump. He dropped more bombs than George Bush. So this isn't about someone being a bad person or being a criminal. This is about someone having, putting an ugly face on the establishment and empire. And they can't have that with Donald Trump. And so even if it's DeSantis, they'll take it because he comes from inside the two party system. They can, can they have their certain amount of controls on those people. And they didn't have them on Donald Trump, which is why they did an evidence-free conspiracy theory for four years called Russia and at this and why did it take him so long to impeach Donald Trump because it took him that long to find a crime that Donald Trump was guilty of that they weren't also guilty of and complicit in and the, you know they impeached him over freaking weapons <laughs> shipments to Ukraine people don't even know that so uh, again this is a political hit job it's a hundred percent uh, what we could, and this is them dividing the country. And Nina Turner's flex is to divide the country further instead of calling out the corrupt FBI and the establishment. Uh, because why? She's a partisan. She's a partisan Democrat. I'm not, which is why I get to call her out. She yeah. famously said, and I'm going to play the video as soon as I get back to my studio on Saturday. And she famously said, Jimmy Dore, I've admired him from afar. He says things I can't say. <laughs> and as soon as I say one of those things, why? And why can't she say things? 
Why would she say that? I, she, Jimmy Dore says things I can't. Why can't you say them, Nina? She can't say them because she wants to secure her position inside the Democratic Party. That's yeah. why she can't say them. And that's why she said thanks for Jimmy Dore for saying it. But then as soon as I say the things she can't say, she calls me a racist. And that's why she's a fucking loser who's lost every race she's ever been in. And it's because people smell her out. She's not what she claims to be. She well, defended she defended the squad around force the vote. Do you need to know anything else? She bullshitted yeah. you. She bullshitted her own supporters about force the vote. She bullshitted her own supporters about the fucking squad. She's a bullshitter and a YouTube pothead comedian calls her out on it and her flex is to call him a racist. Why? Cuz I got her. Yeah. And and go to slide 69 really quick here. Our, our boy Steve from the from uh, the morning show, AM Wake, I'll put this tweet over here. But this is something that we were talking about. Like, I'm like, oh, my God, this woman is talking that Jimmy Dore is anti-black. Does she realize who her president is, what administration she worked for? And he says, you're running a cover for one of the most anti-black administrations in recent history. You're excusing the political weaponization of a domestic terror organization, the FBI, with a history of anti-black activity that includes kidnapping, rape, torture, and murder. But sure, blame Jimmy Dore. And, ah! I mean, I mean, amazing tweet out there, too, as well. I mean, Joe Biden, you know, who wrote the crime? Bill, <laughs> and you want to come over there and says, because Jimmy says that you're being critical of the FBI, that he's anti-black? I mean, is, is not this administration one of the most anti-black administrations that we've ever known, Jimmy? A hundred percent. I mean, the reason why black and brown people are incarcerated at much higher rates than white people is because of Joe Biden. And Joe Biden bragged about it. He, I have videotape of Joe Biden when he wrote the crime bill saying, we hang you for everything except for jaywalking. He was proud of it. And he said, it's not up to us. We don't have to worry about why they became to be this kind of a criminal. The important thing is they're in jail. Yes. And it doesn't matter if we made them that way. Joe Biden said that. It doesn't matter if our society made these people that way. That's not our, we have to first put them in prison. And so that's what, so Joe Biden's been the, he's the one who said he didn't want his kid to grow up in a racial jungle. Didn't his own vice president call him out for being a racist? And mm -hmm. then when Stephen Colbert brought that up to Kamala Harris, she laughed about it in the most mental way possible. And everybody saw it and Stephen Colbert didn't push back on it at all. He just let her do it. Hey, didn't you call this guy a racist? And she just went, yeah, it was a debate. I guess that makes it okay to call somebody a racist. <laughs> anyway, if he's not, well, if he was a racist, why did you say it? I, so anyway, uh, that's their flex. That's what's going on. And of course, the biggest racist motherfucker in the world is Joe Biden. And uh, he's got more blood on his hands when it comes to black people being incarcerated than Donald Trump. Trump, that's for sure, or black and brown people being bombed or, or Hispanics being deported. Joe Biden's much worse than Trump on all those things. Right now, Joe Biden is finishing the border wall in Arizona. Yeah, I yeah. thought they were just cleaning it up. It's just by the way, she, the pain bucket. Grab that. She also she also said that this is the beginning of defeating fascism. That's the tweet that I and many others responded to her that this is the beginning of defeating fascism because the FBI is doing a political hit job on Donald Trump. I, and, and, you know, and people started arguing with me like, well, she didn't say it was defeating fascism, just the beginning. I'm like, how is it? How is it any of that? You have Joe Biden is, is, if not, like you just said, he's worse. He's equally a fascist, but he's a prettier face of imperialism. And that's, that's and right. that is why, that is why he's allowed to do what he's allowed to do. Uh, and so here we are watching the, the Democrats cheer on political pr uh, prosecutions of their political enemies under, I mean, and they're, and then they try to, I mean, at least take credit for it say, yeah, the Democrats want to do this, at least fucking take credit for it. But now they're going to try and push it off on a local FBI guy and a local judge. By the way, wasn't that judge the same guy who gave Jeffrey Epstein his uh, sweetheart deal where he didn't have to do prison time and stuff? Was it? I'm not sure. Double check me on these facts. Wasn't wasn't this guy the most corruptible judge in the world? Yeah, there's a lot of questions about the judge, but, you know, they keep on pointing to the fact that Chris Ray was appointed by Trump and the FBI. So it's OK because this is his guy. And, and the actual guy who ordered the raid, I believe he was also on the 
uh, Gretchen Whitmore case, which had more feds than actual suspects. So they dropped it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the guy's got a good record. As in other words, is what I'm saying, who they put on the case. The whole thing stinks. It's just, it's awful. You know, and the fact that they're inside Trump's safe and not Hillary Clinton's, that is just, I'm sorry, but I can't get past that. Yeah. I, it, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, you're seeing it right at, you know, as Chris Hedges said years ago, they lie, cheat, and steal right out in the open now. Yeah. And they're doing it right out in the open. I mean, uh, Russiagate was right out in the open. They're doing Ukraine right out in the open, but they have the media. So the American people don't realize that they're the most propagandized people in the world. And they don't, re so they're not going to know what to think about, or they're not going to know to think that Ukraine is a big bullshit. It's a, it's a, a illegal, another illegal proxy war, just like Libya, just like Iraq. Just th so they're going to have the FBI go into Donald Trump's closet, but they're not going to arrest Dick Cheney. They're not going to arrest... George Bush for ordering a torture program that they admit that they ordered. They're not going to fucking arrest war criminals, but they're going to get somebody on a technic on mis misusing classified documents. By the way, Donald Trump is the guy who decides what's classified and what isn't. So he could have just said, "I declassified all this shit." Exactly. Just I I, exactly. It, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't take a. You don't have to be smart to see what this is because I can see what it is, and you don't have to be smart to see what the obvious defense of this would be, and you don't have to be a smart to see that this is complete fucking bullshit, and this is to make sure that an outsider never becomes president again. And so I don't know how the Republican Party is responding to this, because don't forget, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are the same. They work, they answer to the same billionaire class. That's who their boss is. Their boss isn't you, the voter. Their boss is their donor class that's going to give them a job as soon as they get out of fucking government. That's what's going on. We have a complete corporate capture of our government. And so I don't know what the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, they of course they're colluding. To, that's what the Lincoln Party project is all about. These are the fucking establishment of uh, military industrial complex, Wall Street toadies, and they got to get rid of Trump because Joe Biden's the biggest military industrial complex toady along with his Wall Street. I mean, the reason why people can't get rid of their debt from medical uh, expenses is because of Joe Biden. Same thing for student loan. He's been in the enemy of the workers. He's been the enemy of black and brown people. And somehow Nina Turner is running cover for them, but I'm the racist. So days are numbered for the Democratic Party and people like Nina Turner. She's already been exposed. She's engaging a fucking pothead YouTube comedian. Why? Not because I'm lying, but because I'm telling the truth. Fam. And the last thing I just want to point out is this tweet by Max Blumenthal. Uh, he found the, that she was the board member of the Cleveland Police Foundation, right? And he said, good to see Cleveland Police Foundation board member Nina Turner push back on calls to defund the FBI. If she ever wins an election, she'll be able to join the rest of the squad in voting to increase the Bureau's budget, which is exactly what the squad has done. And Ilhan Omar just endorsed Nancy Pelosi, guys. Yeah. This is where we're at. I mean, this is where we're at. And she wants to join the squad. She wants to join that. People right. who haven't done a goddamn thing for you. So. She's already That's a my case here. for them. She's a, Nina Turner has already taken the side of politi corrupt politicians over activists for health care. She's already done that. She's already slandered people who are activists for health care. That's what Nina Turner's legacy is going to be, standing up for corrupt politicians and shitting on activists and calling anybody a racist who calls her out for it. Yeah. Well, true or false, Jimmy, my last question, has it come full circle when it comes to the identity politics uh, uh, attacks? Because I think that really to tell you the truth, this two years ago would have been a lot more damaging, I think, as far as like, oh, the people would have been like, yeah, Jimmy, and they would have might piled up. And I think they've reached a point, the Democratic Party, when we talk about all their failures when it comes to getting any policy passed for the working class. Also, they're, I think they've been called out with their bullshit identity politi uh, identity politics attack. Don't you think that now this attack is a lot less, uh, what's the word, effective for them? It doesn't and going to backfire, meaning like oh, the people, Democratic establishment, all these people, when they start saying, oh, he's being anti-black, you're going to have more people going, okay, enough is enough with your bullshit. He's not anti-black. He's calling you out for being pro-FBI. Uh, yeah, I think people see through it, just and it, which is why this will get it, 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 this will, will only actually uh, hurt her. It's not going to hurt me. Uh, it's only this. She's, what she's doing is uh, catnip for the Democratic Party voters. 
and people who defend <laughs> racist Joe Biden. That's what that, that's what this is. And you're right; it would have had m- much more traction a few years ago. But people have seen Nina Turner turn her back on her own supporters time and time again, and they've seen her lie in defense of politicians like the Squad and lie about po- Medicare for all activists. So people are on to for her and her bullshit. She said, "Oh, they have a strategy for forced to vote for Medicare for all around." For, they didn't have a strategy. She was lying. So I outed Nina Turner for that. Everybody gets to see. It's painful to see that someone like Nina Turner is just as big a phony as anybody. But it's true, and so that's what this is all about. And yeah, just like Anna Kasparian launching a phony hashtag Me Too against me got no traction. It made her look bad. This will probably be the same thing for Nina Turner. It's only catnip for people who already hate me. Anybody who's independently minded or a sober thinker is going to look at this situation with Nina Turner and think less of Nina Turner and uh, think more of me. Confirmation bias from people. Yeah. All you got to do is look at uh, Biden's press secretary to know that this this whole bullshit is dead because she just got called out by the African uh, community for for literally ignoring their questions, by the way. So I intersectional imperialism is still imperialism it's yeah. still it's still trash you're still pro security state so it's it's that's done, good it's that's done. Good. i haven't heard that i'm going to use that i'm going to steal that for intersectional imperialism <laughs> that's what it is so it's like <laughs> yeah so yeah. uh it, it's all identity politics that's all they have again remember if, if, if it was 1860, the Democrats wouldn't be fixing slavery. They'd be bragging about their first transgendered slave owner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Jimmy Dore hitting the Midwest. He's in Louisville. Kind enough to jump on and join us today. A uh, little kind of back and forth with Nina Turner, but, you know, uh, we see it for what it is. Jimmy, anything to tell the people out there where they can see you over the next couple of days if they're in the Midwest? Yes, I'm going to be tonight in Louisville, tomorrow in Cincinnati. I'll see you there. Definitely. All right, Jimmy, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Keep it up. Say hi to Steph. Thanks.